Hello viewers, in today's lecture we will discuss population policies in the developed countries. The greatest threat to human existence is our own lack of ability to control our own growth. Concept of population policy Population policy means either direct intervention in the development by adopting and implementing targeted measures or more often by creating conditions of such population development which corresponds with the long-term intention of a state. As a rule, this involves measures influencing natality and indirectly also nuptiality. But it also includes migration policy, foreign migration. According to the United Nations, there is no generally accepted definition of population policy. A narrow definition refers to all deliberate government actions such as laws, regulations and administrative programs intended to influence population growth, size, distribution and composition. Stikers define policy as a statement of important goals accompanied by a specific set of means to achieve them. A well-elaborated set of means constitutes a program. In many low-income countries, rapid population growth has long been viewed as detrimental to future economic growth. As a result, national and international policy debates have focused on reducing fertility rates. Beginning in the 1960s and 1970s, a number of countries adopted explicit policies of population control often with inadequate consideration of the impact on women's reproductive rights which are disproportionately and often negatively affected as a result. The International Conference on Population and Development held in Cairo in 1994 was a major turning point in the history of population policies. At the ICPD countries, agreed that the advancement and protection of women's human rights should be central to government efforts to address population and development issues. The resultant ICPD program of action focused unprecedented attention on gender equality and women's empowerment. It expressed the view that the empowerment and autonomy of women and the improvement of their political, social, economic and health status is a highly important end in itself. Further, the ICPD program of action declared the promotion of the responsible exercise to these rights for all people should be the fundamental basis for government and community supported policies and programs in the area of reproductive health including family planning. The document also affirmed that coercive practices in the provision of family planning services constitute a violation of reproductive rights and should be eliminated. Today, most population policies continue to implicate women's reproductive health and rights. In addition to stating the government's broad objectives on population, these policies often provide the framework for the delivery of reproductive health care. Types of population policies Population policies can be of various types depending upon its purpose. Direct or indirect Direct policies affect population variables directly while indirect policies affect population variables indirectly. For example, encouraging immigration can increase growth rates. The rising levels of education usually result to lower fertility. Thus, making secondary education compulsory could have an indirect effect on fertility. Explicit or implicit Explicit policies are associated with the stated intention of a national government to influence population events. For example, after the Second World War, Australia had the direct immigration policy designed to increase its population, summed up in the very explicit slogan populate or perish. Policies of intervention or non-intervention 
The United Nations has indicated that the government may have explicit or implicit policies of non-intervention. This situation could arise when perhaps after substantial investigation, the government concluded that intervention was unnecessary or undesirable. Domestic or international Bessemer defined international policy as the official attitude adopted by a country in question to attempt to affect population growth rates in the world as a whole or in particular countries or regions which are held to have a population problem. This attitude can express itself in the giving or not giving of aid to family planning programs in other countries or through activity in any of the international agencies concerned with population problems. Anti-nationalist or pro-nationalist The population policy is either anti-nationalist, designed to curb high fertility and thus hampering a rapid growth in the population number, or a pro-nationalist, which involves the intention of maintaining a favourable development of fertility or in the case of negative situation, it wants to achieve its reversal. The former type of population policy is used in many developing countries. The latter appears in European populations with low fertility, which involves a decrease in the population number through population change. Most European countries do not have any population policy as they evidently do not feel its need. Objectives of a Population Policy The purpose of the population policy is, in combination with other policies, to improve sectoral, the quality and conditions of life for the population, prudent and efficient use of natural resources, and equitable distribution of the national revenue are essential to accomplishing this goal. To take into account and help manage demographic growth, the national population policy pursues the following objectives. To promote the health of the population, particularly that of mothers and children. Implementation of the Desirable Births Program. Promotion of the status of women. Preparation and incorporation of youth into the process of development. Organization and promotion of the job market. Implementation of education, information and communication programs relating to the population issue. Spatial redistribution of population. Maintaining a clean and preserved environment. Improvement of data collection and research technicians relating to the population issue. World Population Policies Population policies can be discussed with respect to the following areas. Population growth, to a large extent concerns about the consequences of high and low population growth rates have been translated into policy interventions. In 2013, 37% of governments worldwide had policies to lower the rate of population growth, whereas 20% had policies to raise it. The remaining 43% of governments had policies to maintain the current rate of population growth or did not intervene to influence it. Aging In 2013, information about changes in statutory retirement age and major reforms in the pension system in the past five years was available for 189 countries. Among these countries, governments of 61 countries, 32%, changed their statutory retirement age and governments in 89 countries, 47% reformed their pension system in the past five years. 47 of the 189 governments, 25% changed both the retirement age and reformed their pension system during this time. A little less than half, 46% of the governments with data either changed the statutory retirement age or reformed the pension system during the past five years. Fertility 
In 2013, 27% of governments had policies to raise the level of fertility, 43% had policies to lower it and the remaining 30% either had policies to maintain fertility at current levels or were not intervening it to influence it. Support for family planning Globally, in 2013, 160 out of 197 governments, 81% provided direct support for family planning. The proportion of governments providing direct support has risen steadily since 1976 when less than two-thirds of governments, 63%, provided such support. In 2013, governments in 20 countries provided only indirect support for family planning through the private sector, including non-governmental organizations. Abortion Induced abortion is permitted by almost all countries to save the life of pregnant women. Although some laws and regulations provide detailed lists of the complications that are considered life-threatening, most of them do not specify them explicitly, leaving it to the judgment of a medical personnel performing the abortion. In 2013, 97% of governments permitted abortion to save a woman's life. Only the government of Chile, the Dominican Republic, El Salvador, the Holy See, Malta and Nicaragua did not permit abortion under any circumstances. Violence against women In 2013, information on legal provisions or policies on domestic violence was available for 195 countries. Among these, all but 10 governments, 95%, had adopted some legal measures or policies to prevent domestic violence, including 78% with legal measures, 90% with policies, and 73% with both legal measures and policies. HIV AIDS The extent to which governments politically commit to addressing HIV AIDS has important implications for how the epidemic develops, how it is controlled, and how it impacts on those affected by the disease. In 2013, information was gathered on six key measures that governments had adopted to address HIV-AIDS epidemic. These included routine screening of blood supply, information, education and communication campaigns on the prevention and treatment of HIV-AIDS, provision of antiretroviral treatment, adoption of legal measures, to protect against HIV AIDS, related discrimination, condom distribution programs and prevention of mother to child transmission. Overall, in 2013, 64% of the governments worldwide had adopted all six of the above measures to address HIV AIDS. Policies for Developed Nations the policies for the more developed regions can be understood with respect to the same areas mentioned above. Population growth In 2013, 49% of governments in more developed regions had policies to raise their rate of population growth and only 2% had policies to lower it. In contrast, an equal proportion, 49% of governments, in less developed regions had policies to lower the rate of population growth and 10% had policies to raise it. Over time, as population rates have declined, the percentage of governments with policies to raise the rate of population growth has increased steadily in more developed regions from 23% in 1996 to 49% in 2013. Aging Governments of 80% of countries in more developed regions either change the statutory retirement age or reform their pension system or took both measures in the past five years, compared with only 46% of governments in less developed regions that adopted at least one of the two measures to address population aging. 
The difference by development regions was particularly stark in the percentage of governments that adopted both measures. 53% in more developed regions compared with only 15% in less developed regions. The table 1 shows the government level of concern about aging of population in more developed regions. This is shown as a percentage of nations who considered it as a major concern, minor concern or no concern at all. In 2013, aging had become major concern for around 92% developed countries, up from 76% in 2005. The percentage of countries considering it as minor concern has declined from 24 to 8%. There were no countries that considered it as unimportant in both years. It is clear that for the developed regions, aging is a major policy concern since they are aging rapidly and are facing a number of challenges associated with it. Fertility in 1976, only about one in every five governments in developed regions has policies to raise fertility. But by 2013, this proportion had risen steadily to more than two-thirds. In contrast, in 1976, half of all governments in less developed regions did not intervene to influence fertility and one in three had policies to lower fertility. Since the mid-1990s, the proportion of governments that viewed adolescent fertility as a major concern has been rising in both more and less developed regions. Of the 195 countries with information available in 2013, 90% of governments in less developed regions had policies and programs to reduce adolescent fertility compared with 77% of governments in more developed regions. The table 2 shows the percentage of more developed nations in terms of their policies to alter fertility across different years. The policies are categorized into four groups like those to raise fertility, maintain it, lower fertility or policies of no intervention. It can be seen that the percentage of developed regions opting for raising their fertility levels has increased from 21 to 69 percent between 1976 and 2013, that is almost three times. The nations that wanted to maintain the same level of fertility were 21 percent in 1976 and fell to 14 percent. None of the countries wanted to lower fertility across all time periods except 1996. Also, countries adopting no intervention policies have reduced drastically from 59% in 1976 to 16% in 2013. More countries in the developed world are opting fertility raising policies. In 1976, majority were opting for no intervention policies. Support for family planning In more developed regions, the percentages of governments providing direct support declined gradually from 62% in 1976 to 38% in 2005 but then increased a little to 45% in 2013. Despite this recent increase, governments in less developed regions were more than twice as likely as those in more developed regions to provide direct support for family planning in 2013. Abortion Since the mid-1990s, the number of grounds on which abortion is allowed has been rising in an increasing number of countries in both more developed regions and less developed regions. However, Abortion laws and policies continue to be much more restrictive in countries in less developed regions than in countries in more developed regions on all grounds except to save a woman's life. In 2013, governments of 82% of countries in more developed regions permitted abortion for economic and social reasons and 71% allowed abortion on request. 
violence against women. Governments in more developed regions were more likely to have adopted such measures than those in less developed regions. In more developed regions, 98% of governments had adopted both legal measures and policies to prevent domestic violence, compared to 71% with legal measures, 87% with policies and 65% with both among governments in less developed regions. Maternal Mortality In 2013, among the 197 countries, governments of 122 countries, 62% viewed the level of maternal mortality in their populations unacceptable, down from 69% in 2005. By development level, three out of four governments in less developed regions considered their level of maternal mortality as unacceptable, compared with less than one out of four governments in more developed regions. Migration from rural to urban areas In 2013, the proportion of governments that had policies to lower rural to urban migration was higher in less developed regions, 84%, than in more developed regions, 67%. This proportion was even higher in the least developed countries, 88%. Between 1996 and 2013, the proportion of governments with policies to lower rural to urban migration had increased in both more and less developed regions, as well as in all world regions. In recent years, governments of many countries, mostly those in more developed regions, have modified their migration policies. Some countries have strengthened policies to protect migrant rights, for example, Mexico, Greece and Denmark, while others have adopted more restrictive policies, for example, the United Kingdom and the Netherlands. Still others have modified policies to improve the management of migrant flows. In 2013, policies to raise immigration of highly skilled workers were more common in more developed regions, 55%, than in less developed regions, 34%. Naturalization policies were more restrictive in countries in less developed regions than in more developed regions. 76% of governments in more developed regions allowed less restrictive acquisition of naturalized citizenship in 2013, compared with 60% of governments in less developed countries. Conclusion the population policy should focus on the following to achieve any of its objectives. Firstly, it should focus on improvement of the social welfare through better integration of demographic factors into the process of development and rehabilitation of moral values. Secondly, it should aim at balanced distribution of the population and reduction of regional disparities. Also, it should lay emphasis on the preservation of the environment and lastly, research on the population issue is very important. This is all for today's lecture. Thank you. Next time we will meet again to discuss another interesting topic. Till then, goodbye. Take care.